He was in the booth. He's going to be in the booth for Messi's next match, which is tomorrow night on Apple TV. And joining us back around the program, Taylor Twelman. How are you, sir? Good. How are you, pal? What's going on? Well, tell me about it, man. Just go for it. What was it? Just lay it out there. Friday night. Go well, for it. Well, Rich, the the best part is, and you you know this better than anyone. They always tell you in those big moments to really resist the urge to say anything. Yes. And yet, about eighty five seconds went by. And I forgot I was commentating the game. <laughs> I, 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 I literally was so enthralled with the moment to then see him celebrate at the end and run over and see his mom, his dad, his family, his kids. Uh, it, it is as surreal of a moment I've ever been a part of, and that includes the Zlatan Ibrahimovic debut for the Galaxy, which we could always get into a debate, but the Hollywood screenwriters may be on strike, but I feel like they mm. wrote one script, and that was for David Beckham. No, and, you know, Zlatan is Zlatan. And, you know, <laughs> I, I think that speaks volumes, even though I just only said three words. <laughs> but Messi's on a different level, right? I mean, he's just on a different level. Yeah. Taylor? Yeah, and even Zlatan would tell you that. You know, he, he sat down with me two or three times, for long interviews with ESPN, and and there was a reverence to Messi. You know, there wasn't a reverence to Pep Guardiola. There wasn't a reverence to Thierry Henry. But for someone like Zlatan, for someone like Thierry Henry, anyone in this game, number 10 from Argentina shows up, there's a reverence. They know, we know, everybody knows. I just think what's remarkable here is that he just started training four days ago, Rich. And so while his teammate, his best friend, Sergio Busquets, is on the record of saying how fit he's been, staying fit, Messi needed time off. He just won the World Cup, then immediately went in to finish the European Club season. He needed time off. He shows up in Miami. He trains three times, and he's not going to run around and buzz around the way he used to 10 years ago or when I played against him in 2007. But Rich, just different that there's an element of the bigger the moment, the easier it is for him. And I think there's athletes on one hand that you and I could talk about for an entire radio show that we could say did that, that actually has the ability to pull it off. And to get David Beckham to cry, huh. that says it all. Well, I mean, that because it, it had to – I can only imagine how long Beckham was at it, right? And and then he, oh. and then he finally lands him. And then in the first match, that happened. That he would even have an opportunity, well, I mean, right? Like that, that well, the opportunity would come right, along like, and then he would cash it in like that. Of course exactly. he's going to Right. Exactly. And even more so, Rich, it took David Beckham eight and a half years just to get the franchise, <laughs> let alone Lionel Messi. Right. Then COVID hits. I mean, he's been punched in the gut three or four times. I just think there was a real moment there for the Moss family and Beckham, and I think the emotion, sh- it, they showed that real emotion. Taylor Twelman from Apple TV, lead MLS analyst, of course, former MVP of the league, joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, just can you explain to me what the atmosphere was like? Uh, more more uh, Argentina kit than, than inner Miami split? What do you got for me on that front? Uh, way, mo- way more pink than I thought I would have seen. Uh, it was cool. way, there was obviously, there's the Argentina jerseys. You're going to see that. You're seeing that at the all-star game in DC. You're mm-hmm. just, now that he's here, all of that's going to come out. You saw some of the Paris jerseys, but I was stunned how much pink there was. But honestly, the atmosphere was like, you know, any other Friday night for me, you know, Serena Williams, LeBron James, Kim <laughs> Kardashian, just the whole nine yards. Right? Just like any other ordinary, normal MLS game, buddy. <laughs> that everyone was there, right? I mean, and your, your broadcast was all over that. <laughs> By the way, there was a great shot. Our, our buddy Pat McAfee popped on his Instagram too. I don't know if you saw that, but everyone was was had their phones up um, when Messi was yes. kicking, uh, you know, attempting the game winner. I think it was the game winner, or the the eventual game winner, right? Uh, but no, the but, picture actually, Rich, the picture was when he was coming, coming on. In. All of those right. celebrities had the phone up. And, Rich, it's one of the best photos. For, for your listeners, you got to find it. Mm-hmm. And yet only one person didn't have his phone up, and it was David Beckham. Yeah, it was. And I think, Rich, there was it was so symbolic for me right? because he, oftentimes, and I didn't pull my phone out once. I don't have a single, single picture from that night. But, Rich, I'm old school. You know me a little bit. I, I, I wanted to be so enthralled with the moment. I didn't care about text and pictures and all that. I just thought that picture was amazing. 
everybody's taking a picture, and David's sitting there just taking it all in. Yeah, he's like, I'm Beckham, so, you know, I can, I'll can. i just take a mental photograph of this moment. Taylor Twelman here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what's next? What's the next step? Tuesday, right? Yeah, good luck. Tuesday night, uh, good luck on the uh, sequel to that. I Honestly, this is more intriguing to me because of the soccer part. This mm-hmm. is Atlanta United where – Inter Miami's head coach won an MLS Cup. Uh, this is where Joseph Martinez, who now looks like the old Joseph Martinez a little bit, who's now playing with Messi, scored 77 goals in three years for for Atlanta. So now there's going to be an animosity. Uh, I just left the press conference before uh, calling you. Mm-hmm. They, Messi's now the captain. It sounds like Messi's going to play a little bit more. Bruschetta's going to play a little bit more. I think you're going to get a little bit more of a taste of what Inter Miami and Major League Soccer is going to look like with Messi in it. Well, I'll be honest with you, Taylor. This is the first Tuesday of NFL tra- Monday of NFL training camp opening week in the nine years we've been here. Uh, I guess eight in which we've had an opportunity because we came on during the middle of a football season nine years ago. That we've been talking MLS. I mean, uh, that Friday moment was exactly what the the you know league wanted or could use. Um, one thousand percent as well for the television partner and in Apple TV. Do you think this is going to actually keep cutting through, or does Messi need to keep having these transcending moments? What do you got for me on that, Taylor? I think he. I think he has to win. I don't think he has to hit a ninety-fourth minute game-winning shot every single <laughs> game. I think anyone that expects that is going to be out of their coconut. But. Rich, to your point, you've got this summer, next summer's Copa America, Argentina's in that. Guess who's the face of that tournament? Messi, an MLS player. 2025, FIFA Club World Cup. 26, the World Cup. So for the next three summers, all the eyeballs in the world, for almost six to eight weeks, everywhere in the world is going to be on this country, and guess who the face of it is now? So I, I just look at this. I think Apple TV allows you and rich you and i know this but the listeners don't understand that highlight is not geo blocked that highlight hit over a hundred million views in less than 24 hours amazing a lot of times debut is geo blocked so no one around the world could see that so the power of apple tv having the rights to major league soccer in 107 countries that in and of itself with the greatest player in the world that tells you right now it's going to it's going to infiltrate and transcend sports and soccer i think faster than beckham did Zlatan, anyone else right and so then you couple that with the runway of the next 3 years going into the world cup rich i just think the time is now and i think a lot of people are starting to see it taylor twelman here uh, on the rich eisen show uh then let's talk about uh the sport writ large on that front what's your two cents on the gold cup performance by the men taylor uh, it's, it's still disappointing. I don't care if it's your A minus team, B team, and even C plus team. You've got to be in the final. I don't care who you play against, how you go about it. The United States men's national team is deep enough to field two teams that should go there. So that's as disappointing as anything. Now, in saying that, this is also coming off a, a winter World Cup. So it's difficult to assess some players. Some players are completely knackered, Rich. They are exhausted. They've played for 18 straight months. Mm-hmm without an off season. So I'm going to give them a pass, but Copa America is going to be real interesting because Greg Berhalter coming back as the manager, not highly liked yeah. from the, you know what I mean? From outside the sport. So they, I think there's a lot of pressure on that team to perform next summer. Can you explain to people who may not uh, get it? And there's a lot of people who don't get it when they hear that the U S men's national team in any competition, like the gold cup, doesn't put the best players out there. Like how? Like where? Where is everybody? And explain why? Why they feel? Because it does feel like uh, any from the outside in clearly that uh, can can the U.S. men's national team just afford to not be constituted in the best way that they can for every single one of these types of uh, events? Tim, great question. Great question. The answer to that is yes. The United States can. Um, I think because right now you have players playing at the highest of levels, Rich, that we've never had, right? So you've got to allow those players to be ready for their club season because what's most important for the U.S. national team Mm -hmm. is that the players playing at the highest level are playing consistently. They're not sitting on the bench. Ballistic move in AC Milan, a massive move for him for his confidence. And if he plays well, guess what that transcends to? 
to the national team. So the United States men absolutely can. The other aspect is you get a deeper roster, Rich. So now I want a pool that's bigger of 50, 55 players that I can count on for major tournaments. Now, Copa America next summer, dude, that's the A-team. That's going to be the best 20, 20 20-some-odd players that you can bring in at that moment. But this year, the Gold Cup came after a Winter World Cup. It would be so stupid of the U.S. national team to ask the players Hmm. that consistently played for the last 19 months to take one more summer, that then that that doubles down. That's 28 months. Guess what? Copa America next year. Rich, they needed a break. Those guys needed three to four weeks off. They had to give it, and it was rightfully so that they did so. I think to give those players the best opportunity this club season. And uh, another story that is uh, jumping out on, on the news stack today from the world of football uh taylor twelman <laughs> is, uh, is unbelievable by you know, the way. it's the truth though is mbappe um now being in the sights of the saudi team al halal that struck out i guess one would say on messi uh allowing you know allowing for friday night's moment right is that messi told the saudis beat it essentially um that they are putting 332 million dollars on the table to Paris Saint-Germain to go get Mbappe and uh, then throw another three quarters of a billion on top to hand to the French star. Um, what do you think of that? What's happening there, Taylor? For one season, Rich. Right. For one season. This isn't a four-year deal. It's right. <laughs> it's $1.1 billion package to both Mbappe and PSG for one year, and then they're saying he can go play for Real Madrid. I, I'm of the mindset. How, how do you how do you turn that down? Apparently, he's thinking of it. Now, listen, apparently, he's he's not interested. He's saying right now, is what the yeah, story yeah, is course, here. Because you know why? Because guess what? Paris is going to offer him. Paris is going to offer him nine year deal at one point two billion, and he gets to play in Champions League, and he gets to stay home, and he gets to play in one of the top five leagues in Europe. So he's going to have to make a real decision. But if he wants to go to Real Madrid. In my opinion, I would take the Saudi Arabia deal right now because he will not go to Real Madrid right now because Real Madrid doesn't want to do that. Real Madrid can save $300 million given to Paris, buy better players to make the team better, and he goes there for free. So in my, if, if I'm killing Mbappe, I'm looking at it saying you pocket $800 million, which, by the way, Rich, we don't understand. It's net. That's not gross. That's net. So, like, how, how do you turn that down? I'm having a tough time turning that down. Well, uh, again, to the, according to this story that I'm reading on uh, the uh, the app of our former places of business, ESPN, saying uh, in this story that um, he plans to walk away as a free agent at the upcoming season when he's widely expected to join Real Madrid. And sources told ESPN that Mbappe is not interested in the offer from Al Halal. How about them apples? That's now, the story. He will not play for PSG though, so that's the pickle. He will not. They will not play him. Yeah, because they well, they, they don't get hurt, right? Pretty much. Is that it? Or, yeah, or they what? Don't, well, he's leaving for free, so they're going to say no. You can't. You can't play. And then guess who holds his card? They do. So he either has to take a transfer, or he waits six months, signs a free transfer. That's why this is of the utmost importance, and that's why the reports literally 20, 30 minutes ago in France, is that it's going to be a $1.1 billion offer from Paris to try to get... I, I just don't see how he says no, but also Paris says, no, we're not going to allow you to play either. This could get ugly. Uh, before I let you go, Taylor, uh, while you were in the booth in Miami, uh, the women's national team took on Vietnam um in their first match down under which i think i'm allowed to say australia and uh, new zealand um so i'm wondering any any first blush thoughts on the the first match or matches that you've seen from from that tournament about the the women's chances to take home another cup taylor i think it's going to be interesting rich i've been on the record and i'm gonna stay on the record i think the rest of the world's catching up to them And I get it. I'm saying that as they're trying to chase their three-peat. I understand all of that. But I watch Brazil. Watch out. I watch France. There's teams that all of a sudden, that gap that you and I have been so used to Mm -hmm. being in the media world or even when I played, the gap was always the United States women, everyone else. 
there's pressure now coming, right? So, th- listen, th- the new crop of player for the United States, Smith, I mean, she's fantastic. She's, she's going to carry on the torch from Rapino and Alex Morgan. I get all that, but the rest of the world all of a sudden catching up. And I think the U.S. viewer now is going to be exposed to the U.S. women being challenged a little bit more than they have in years past. That would be my first overarching theme after watching a couple of the games. Taylor, look at us chopping it up on soccer. How about us right now, you and I? I know. You right guys now. lost the bet, didn't you? No. I, I, I'll be honest. I'm like sitting here. Um, I, you, I, you know I reached out to you over the weekend. I'm just sitting here thinking, yeah. you know, what are we talking about on Monday that was that, 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 that will be of interest to um, you know, our fans of our show and uh, that, that I'm interested in? And that messy moment. That's it, man. I mean, there's obviously some big moments to talk about from baseball and the, the NFL world's about to kick in. That was huge Friday night. Absolutely huge. And then the Women's World Cup happening. I love it. Yeah, it's great. It is terrific. And uh, so Tuesday, uh, give me give me the details for those who want to see Messi's next yep. match. Taylor, what do you got for me? Tuesday night, Apple TV, MLS season pass, 730. Uh, pre-game starts at 630. We'll have who knows what celebrities. Okay. Are coming to this one, but it will be Inter Miami taking on Atlanta United. Okay, uh, for its first broadcast in which uh, you, you've thrown down to uh, a chit chat with Kim Kardashian, right? That's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah. For you in your career? Yeah, I, I mean, I expect it to happen Tuesday night, naturally in Fort Lauderdale. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's just say there's fewer celebrities, and you might need some time to fill at any point in time. I'll call you. No, no. Well, actually, you don't have to. I'm giving you something uh, right here. You just mentioned uh, mm-hmm. Messi and I share a birthday. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I'm 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 part of the messy mania. We're gonna do an entire A block on that, Rich. June twenty fourth, uh, you know, two legends were born separately. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, you should see I can fifteen years apart. I can bend it too. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it, Taylor. You be well. Thanks again. Let's do this again. That's Taylor Twelman, everyone. Right here on the Rich Eisen show. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern for free. 